speaking. So you're with me. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the hour that you all have been waiting for. I have on my on Positive Vibes two beautiful, strategic, healthy, strong women in EP. I have Monica Dupirion, which is at my lower right. I don't know if she's at your lower left. I'm not sure. However, I want to have Monica come and give herself this introduction to give you guys a breath of fresh air about who she is, what she does, and the professionalism that she endures. And also, we're going to explore. We're also going to go to the other Monica, and she's going to explain, explain to you who she is. So, Monica Dupirion, let's go with you, doll. Thank you for that. Um, my name is Monica Duperon Rodriguez, and I am a uh, senior manager for uh, global security and risk management, uh, which includes executive protection solutions at LinkedIn. And I uh, come from a law enforcement background. I've been doing executive protection for over 15 years now. Um, so I, I have extensive experience uh, internationally and here in the United States. I've traveled all over Africa, South America, Central America, been to London, Copenhagen, so parts of Europe. Um, I love what I do. I am uh, always trying to learn new things and new uh ways of, of just being better, getting better at what I do. So that is me in a nutshell. Wow. That's a, that's a big net there, girl. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's good. And we're going to go to Monica. Are you ready, girl? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. There you go. So okay, hello. Monica. Yeah, we are good. So I'm Monica Sakura. Aka Sakura. Sakura is the Japanese uh, cherry blossom flower. It means that I'm a martial artist. Uh, I created my own style, my own school, and I'm the CEO of uh, Sakura Dojo here in uh, Lisbon, Portugal. I've been training martial arts uh, 30 years now, and I've been teaching more than 20 years. And my goal and my passion was to teach women how to defend themselves. So I created this uh, self-defense system uh, based on my experience and my point of view, being a woman, being smaller, shorter, uh, working more about the speed, more the technique, the skills that we need to, um, to be more confident as well. So I developed that and then I start teaching around the world. That was my goal. My, my biggest dream was to teach women, especially Middle East. So I've been traveling in Iran, Qatar, Kuwait, uh, uh, Jordan, so uh, Dubai and parallel so I, I'm a protector so I want I wanted to also to um, to be able to protect children to protect women and been I think 10 years now in executive protection we call it close protection here in Europe and I've been working also with this Middle East uh, princess, such an honor to be able to protect them, to work with them. Uh, I've worked for princess from Abu Dhabi, from Qatar. I've been in New York. I live in uh, United States. I hope I can go because now we have this project, Women in Protection. So that's me in short. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. That is so awesome. You know, Monica. Yeah. Monica, that is that is beautiful. You know, we're going to get into the breadth of this conversation because I know you ladies um, are excited as I am. And I hope to see you get ladies in September eight on September eighteenth. Are you coming to Atlanta for the um, Coast Quarter Combat? I hope that so. is that is the plan. That is plan. I'm September for all the details, but um, that is the plan. Yeah. I hope I can try. Yeah, if I can travel. Yeah. <laughs> Let's with, see. Yeah, with uh, with MC Monica Cotto. Um, you know, it really depends on the uh, uh, on the United States if they allow her to come in. Yes. Right, we're, we're gonna we're gonna be praying, Monica. Well, you know what, Monica? I want to because a lot of people don't know about Clubhouse. I want to make sure we before we dig into the conversation about women in EP. I want you to talk about. The clubhouse thing, the clubhouse event that goes on on Mondays in Clubhouse with women at EP, all the no, enormous information that is expounded on this clubhouse regarding women in EP. Let's expound on that just a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so myself and Monica Cotto, 
we are partners in crime on a project that we call Women in Protection, and uh, it's currently on Clubhouse. And um, we are on Mondays, uh, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And basically mm -hmm. what we do is we bring topics to the table that we mm -hmm. feel are important to women in protection. Um, and we have a conversation about it. And what I love about the platform is that it also gives us some good insight on what our male counterparts mm -hmm. also experience in working with women. Um, we have a lot of allies. We have a lot of support supporters, and it includes both men and women of all levels in protection, from the person that's starting out to directors and senior directors at corporations. Um, and, and so it's, it's just a really wonderful place for us to bring a topic and have a conversation about it. And it's a very candid conversation. And it, I, I feel that it's very educational as well. So I really love that platform. And of course, I, I have the best partner um, anybody could ever want. And that's Sakura Monica Koto. My pleasure. Hey, now, I totally agree. Now let's dig into this women in EP thing here. Now, Monica has already sent this question over to Hugh. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go down the line with questions. And Monica, I'm going to let you allow me to use you as the person, the vessel to point to Monica or you to answer that question. Okay. Okay. So let's start out. What are the misconceptions when it comes to security versus executive protection? I think one of the misconceptions is that um, they're universal, mm -hmm. that they are the same thing. Um, and they're not, uh, you know, security is just as important as the executive protection team. Uh, site security is usually static positions or they have oversight on access, um, protocols, badging, um, that kind of thing. Uh, when we go to executive protection where we have a task and a task is to protect an individual or it could be a, a number of individuals. Um, but our main priority is making sure that that person can get from point A to point B without a problem. And then also doing intelligence um, uh, analysis to make sure that, you know, if there's any threats of attack, um, that we properly indicate what kind of risk level that person has. That way we can also um, allocate the right amount of executive protection agents to be able to protect and manage that. Um, so risk mitigation, risk management, um, transportation, logistics, that all falls under executive protection. Awesome. So I, I do want to jump into this. I know bodyguard gets a little bit twisted too when it comes to EP. So we're gonna, I, I just really want to get some clarity on these things. And then we're going to go down the line as to why one should consider getting an executive protection person for them. What, let's go into the bodyguarding and, exec, and executive protection specialist, the difference. Well, you know, I, I think the clearest way that I could describe bodyguarding or a bodyguard um, it is uh, it, it, it's somebody who is, you know, the big burly person who um, stands next to their client at a casino or a bar or a club. Um, it, I think, it, it, you know, those those can be used interchangeably. Uh, bodyguard, executive protection. I honestly don't don't have any preference. I, I mean, we essentially do the same thing. It's just executive protection is just a nicer and easier way to do it. Plus, we also have more specialized training than uh, bodyguard. We we have training that. Um, is uh, more thought provoking and it's more, um, it's not as overt. Um, it's not just right there in your face. Uh, executive protection agents can be um, within the crowd. You, you don't even know that they're there and they blend in, they're chameleons. 
uh, whereas a bodyguard isn't necessarily they're they're there to be seen and it is known that that is a bodyguard. So that that is one of the differences. And Monica Coto might have a different uh, way of explaining that. Way to pull her in, Monica. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> no bodyguard again. When uh, when uh, here in Portugal, we have the close protection operative. Or in UK, we have this license. And when we operate, we say that we are CPOs. So we are close protection operatives. But it's the same, executive protection, close protection, bodyguards. We are there to protect. Uh, but maybe, like Monica said, uh, maybe we have to be more discreet or just to blend in and nobody notice that we are there. Sometimes uh, we call it the iron position. We have to be there, that presence, that physical um, it depends on the client, it depends on the context. I can give you example for the female uh, Middle East, this princess, they don't want a bodyguard. They want someone that could be maybe a personal assistant, maybe a nanny, maybe personal trainer, someone or a friend to be there. And if something happens, then we are ready to uh, do our job. Uh, I think there are a few differences, but depends on context, depends on the risk, on the level, everything that we have to assess before we take a mission but the most important i think it's education it's the the base what we learn uh, and that 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 make it make the difference between a good bodyguard close protection or executive protection yeah awesome awesome you said and i want to do something really quick on monica i'm going to add a file i'm going to share my screen and show you a little bit show you guys a little bit of what Monica has and that she does with her organization out where she is. So you ladies and gentlemen, just give me, bear with me one second. I'm going to put this in there and we're going to, we're going to get moving here. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> as long as everything, everything does what it's supposed to do. Let me try to be stuck. Yes. Well, here it's, yeah, I'm teaching someone uh, how to protect themselves. It's, um, uh, how old is she? Maybe 10, 10 years old. She started with me when she was five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm teaching her to protect herself. So sometimes we are protectors, you know, but imagine that we are not there. I always say this when children go to school, I'm not there. Mother, father, they are not there to protect them. So they have to learn how to protect themselves from young, from young age. That's what I think. So that's me teaching her how to protect herself. Awesome sauce. That yeah. is so that's awesome. So let's talk about martial arts because I know that's that's more in your camp, um, Monica. When yeah, not a lot of parents want to get their kids into martial arts. However, they don't know the exact things that they should be looking for when it comes to choosing a class for. True. Yes. For, true. The, for the child, what should they look for? Especially you know, according to girls and boys, what should they be looking for? Yes. So. Uh, if you are looking just to to your kid to be more social, to be more uh, open or more social with, with other children, you can go for a judo class or karate class. But when you are looking something more specific, more, no, I want my, my kids to learn how to de defend themselves, that's jujitsu. Uh, jujitsu is more uh, <laughs> contact, more grappling. Uh, so um, all the drills and all the exercise uh, we create these scenarios like pushing uh, uh, to the ground, grabbing the hair, go to the neck. That drills you don't find in judo or uh, in karate because it's the techniques that are more dangerous, they say. But, mm -hmm. but in my case, I chose the, the best techniques to allow them to feel that contact that if someone push you, you know how to get your balance, your distance, your timing to react. So that's what I teach. That's jujitsu. It's not easy to find. Not every teacher know how to separate the sports versus self-defense. They are 
different, like competition is one thing, self-defense is another. So it's important when you go to a gym or a dojo that you look to the instructor, you talk to the instructor and ask about what's that? Judo, Aikido, Karate, kickboxing, all different um, goals and objectives. Yes. Awesome. Now, Monica, we were talking about bodyguard and executive protection. How does an organization or person decide which one they want to hire? I go to you, Monica. <laughs> um, it, it really depends on what they're looking for in terms of, um, okay, so first of all, are, are we dealing with a CEO of a company or are we dealing with an entertainer or are we dealing with a high net worth family? Um, that in and of itself will kind of dictate what kind of person we're looking for. Um, you will see bodyguards sometimes more so in entertainment than you will in corporate security or in high net worth uh, family structures. Um, and then also with the royal families from the Middle East, they will always be looking for, bot uh, I'm sorry, an executive protection specialist. Um, and, and there's a lot of work for females in executive protection, um, constantly getting requests for women in protection. Um, so there's plenty of work out there. Um, and, and as I said, bodyguards are typically more so in the, in the entertainment, um, wrestling, WrestleMania type of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, not so much in corporate or high net worth. Wow. Now let's talk about women in protection because a lot of people, I mean, they know of us, but they don't know of us. Women in protection, we can do things that a lot of men can't do. Let's be, let's get a little bit more specific as to why like a mom that is a CEO of a corporation that's getting a lot of, you know, she's getting a lot of, you know, people that are starting to look towards her and she has children. Why would she look towards a woman in protection versus a male in protection? Let's Okay, well, that, that's easy enough. A uh, female in protection or a female CEO would uh, benefit from having a female on the protection team because um, they can go into the bathrooms with her, powder rooms, um, you know, green rooms, uh, wherever it is that she wants to go, a, a female has that versatility. The other thing, too, is women have a, an easier... Um, we have an easier way of blending in with our environment um, and we're, for the most part, less intimidating. So we're able to get more information. Um, you know, if we need uh, specific information from a concierge at a hotel or a butler, we're a little bit more... Um, I want to say a little bit more tactful in the way that we do it and... Um, our approach is just very un, um, un, it's not threatening. It's, you know, Monica Goto, she's lethal, but she doesn't look it. <laughs> no, look at me like an angel. Lethal with her hands. Yes. Um, it's like you say, we look like friendly. We, we get like information. Friendly. Yes. And we, we we're we're yes. just your average you know woman out there but you know she she's lethal with her hands i i'm pretty proficient with firearms and and um and you know weapon uh sharp you know edged weapons and stuff like that so wow. you look at us and you wouldn't you wouldn't see that could you see me with an ar-15 maybe not but can i use one Yes, you, you better can. believe I can. So, uh, and, and Monica, Monica is great with her, you know, with her, with her, her art and what she's capable of doing. It doesn't take away from our ability to perform our, our specific jobs in executive protection. We actually have a way of doing it without being um, so overt about it. And actually, um, you know, one of the things that that we're always saying is we want it to be YouTube friendly, no matter what it is that we do. We don't want to call attention to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're able to do things in very subtle ways. Whereas if you have somebody who's six foot four and he's 300 pounds, pure muscle, it's a little bit harder because attention's already on him. He's already bigger than the average person and every all eyes go to that person. Right. So if you want that, 
that's what you get. If you want somebody that blends in, but is still able to perform, you look to women. Blending yeah. in and yeah. lethal. Blending in and lethal, should I say. I'm glad that you got onto the, the subject of guns, Monica, because you know I know that you know in this day and age, a lot of women are purchasing guns and things like that. However, what should women do to be more effective, not effective, when they're gun doing when they're purchasing a gun and the handling of a gun? Well, first and foremost, they really need to understand what kind of gun is going to be the best weapon for them. You know, there's there's different sizes, different weights, um, you know, just different technology, which one is going to work best for them. I think that the, doing the research ahead of time before going out and getting a gun is going to be extremely important. Going and getting a gun is, um, you know, yet another step. But utilizing that gun, practicing with it, going to a really good instructor that can teach them the proper methods of utilizing that gun, securing the gun, cleaning the gun. Those are all aspects of being able to own one. If you just own one and you don't know how to clean it, you don't know, you know too much about it, you don't know how to utilize it, then you don't have a really good, powerful weapon because you don't, you're not proficient in it. A gun is a paperweight unless you learn how to use it and how to use it properly. And the other thing too, is it comes with a very high level of responsibility. You can basically terminate somebody's life. So you have to take that seriously. It's a huge responsibility. If you're not ready for that, maybe you should look to other weapons. Absolutely. Now, uh, Monica, I don't know if you can see the question that a young lady by the name of Scott Darling has a question on the bottom of the screen. And you, uh, you or Monica can answer that question. Yeah, better, Monica, because here we don't use weapons. <laughs> we are the weapon. <laughs> um, okay, so she's asking about a domestic violence relationship and a criminal record as a result of that domestic violence relationship. Will she be able to apply for a weapon to protect herself and her children? Um, if, the charge, if the criminal charges are against you, the female, and it's as a result of domestic violence, uh, in most states, the answer is no, you will not be able to get a weapon because it, because the, the battery is not a misdemeanor. And even if it is a misdemeanor, it's, it's, um, it, it's in correlation with domestic violence and any, any time that you attach a crime with domestic violence, you will not be able to carry a weapon. Thank Sorry, Sky. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would highly suggest that, um, in, in, you know, domestic violence is a huge issue. Um, so Sky, if you're still listening, uh, go to get some uh, martial arts training. And I know Monica Cotto can, yeah. can uh, attest to that. And also make sure your children have some of that training as well. So I, I would highly suggest that you and your children get some uh, martial arts training. Yes. Well, thank you. Well, um, well, ladies, I know you have stuff to do. We're going to close up here. We talked about the clubhouse. Uh, Monica, you told us about what you were doing. How can one, if they want to get information in regarding guns and training, uh, Monica, Hyperion, how can they do that? I know you're in different states. What should they do to look into getting a proper firearms person to train them? Well, you know, uh, speaking of Clubhouse, we I, I'm also a moderator of Firearms and Combatives with Mark Six James and Mitch O'Neill both who are experts in uh, firearms and combatives, and they are filled with uh, information on, um, on, you know, on training. And also Mitch O'Neill is uh, the principal owner of Nova, um, and I forget the entire title, Nova Dynamics. Um, he is out of Atlanta, Georgia, and he is also um, in uh, uh, Stuttered Gun and Range, and he's a uh, he's a very very good resource for not only purchasing a weapon but also obtaining the right type of training for the for that. So that. And one last question I have, and I'm going to let you ladies go. Now I know that I've seen all different types of guns. Um, what about the you know people are purchasing guns, but they want to purchase that cute gun. 
What are your thoughts on that purchasing that cute purple little gun that probably wouldn't shoot a bird out of the sky? It's cute. That's all it is. It's just cute. It looks good. It's cute. It's not going to be very functional um, for the most part unless you train with it. But even still, those little guns really don't have much impact. Um, but the other thing that I would like to before we close that is extremely important for executive protection, whether you're in Europe where Monica is um, or, or in the United States or anywhere in the world, um, you need to look into licensing, appropriate licensing um, that is required in order for you to legally be a security uh, operative and executive protection. So it's extremely important to be able to get the proper licensing. And to know the, and, and to know, let me add, and to know the rules of the state that you're in when you're carrying it. All Absolutely. That Absolutely. It's, 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 you're not in in Monica Goto's case, it would be whatever country you're in because Europe is existence here. Uh, here in the United States is whatever state you're in, make sure that you know what kind of uh, mandates are uh, put upon uh, executive protection and security. Absolutely. And not only that, Monica, they need to know once they purchase a gun, make sure you have the proper apparatus and the proper things at home once you purchase that gun. And also, if you have children in the home, you want to make sure you not just purchase a gun, yes. you have a safe place for the gun to go because if something should happen, if you purchase that gun and it's in your name and there's a child in the home or somebody gets, even if someone steals it, that's on you. That's a, it's a, again, uh, having owning a gun, having a gun and not training in it or not knowing how to properly store it is a huge responsibility and you could be held liable. So make sure to educate yourself on everything that is required to maintain safety, not only for yourself, for your family, but also for any guests that might come to your home who, uh, you know, may get a little curious and want to uh, take an adventure into your you know, bedroom or wherever you might have it. So it's really important, high level responsibility. You have to really take it seriously. Awesome. And uh, Monica, also the big thanks to you for um, the uh, thing in the uh, Circuit Magazine. Tell people about the Circuit Magazine, because there's a lot of people that don't know about the Circuit Magazine. Tell them what you did and uh, how you had a... Yes. Uh, Oh. <laughs> Circuit yeah, right. Magazine wow. is a um, it's a global security magazine, um, and mm -hmm. uh, actually Elijah Shaw from uh, Icon is the editor in chief. And um, so I actually wrote an article. Um, I've I've been writing for uh, Circuit for some time, uh, but I recently wrote a, an article about an all women's security team out of Georgia. Um, and uh, it actually made the cover of the magazine. So I was quite proud of that. Um, and within the same issue, there was also an interview about, about me and my past and some of my history. So if anybody wants to know more about myself, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to Circuit Magazine um, and definitely look for the Women in Protection cover because that would be what I wrote. Um, and then we, we actually have other uh, really awesome stories that are going to be coming um, up and coming in the next few issues regarding women in protection. So I'm really excited about that as well. Awesome. Um, any last remarks, uh, Monica? I know it's, you know, it's, it's probably time for dinner, right, Monica? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just to close, the, uh, again, if you uh, want to start with self-defense, it will help you then to transition maybe for the weapons training. So before you go to the weapons training, uh, try to understand more about our body mechanics, how we work, how can we control other people before we control an object so all things are uh, together integrate in one system so protection it's all about that starts with the mind then goes for the body then even a pen can be a little weapon so you just need knowledge education training that skills that we are always talking about the soft skills hard skills extra skills so we just need more women in protection we need role models we need empowerment that's why we are here and good vibes positive absolutely vibes. positive vibes yeah. for sure thank so you for school. having us yes. oh it's a blessing i'm honored you guys know i'm cheering up inside it's just an honor to be just in the circle of you beautiful positive, executive, strong, 
women doing what you do in excellence women in protection ep on mondays at clubhouse don't forget ladies thank you so much have an amazing friday i love you the most And also, if I could give another plug to Executive Protection on Sundays, that's all Executive Protection. There's a lot of really good knowledge, too, if you want to learn more about the profession from professionals, from experts. Um, And that is with Elijah Shaw, uh, Ben Aloisi, uh, moderated by Isabella, and uh, Mark James is also on there. So it's it's a group of uh, very dynamic individuals. Mondays, it's Women in Protection. Wednesdays is uh, Firearms and Combatives. So don't forget. And then also, I, I really want to stress Uh, Self-defense is extremely important regardless of whether you get into the profession or not, just for personal safety, go and get yourself some sort of um, martial arts and self-defense training. Absolutely. And be aware of your surroundings. We're living in a day and age where people are lurking and they're looking for the first person that can be a suspect and not aware of their surroundings, no matter if you're by yourself or if you're with your children or with someone else. Be aware of your surroundings. Make yes. sure you stay in, you stay into the know of what's going on in your communities because you could be in an area or a place where there's someone that's lurking in that community and they just put up a bulletin before you left out of the house about this person that's in a community that's doing damage to children or just women in general. Make sure you stay in the know with the right yes. people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep your energy positive and yes. high. Yeah. Amen. Have a great day, ladies. Love you much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you.